Sometimes when you play Diablo 4, you have this itch. You just want to wipe everything on your screen and not just that, but also everything that is beyond your screen. You know what I mean? Thankfully, my machine gun Rainbow Rogue build scratches that itch very well. This build is very powerful, very good, fun and very powerful. Wait, I already said that. AoE? Covered. Wipes everything like it's nothing. What about bosses then? Covered. Complete destruction. I even have to slow down the footage here in order for you to see what's happening. That is how fast this build destroys bosses. But Reign of Arrows sucks is what I've been hearing here and there. Well, not anymore after today. Because see, Reign of Arrows is great when combined with Rapid Fire and the Word of Hakan and some other things that we'll be going over in this video. I made this build and I had to make it work for two reasons. Reason number one being Reign of Arrows is just too cool. It is without a doubt one of the coolest abilities in the game. And reason number two, Rapid Fire emulates you having a machine gun in this game. And who doesn't want to have a machine gun, right? In in video games uh, obviously so our two main abilities rapid fire and rain of arrows synergize very well together actually and this is simply because rapid fire has insane single target damage and rain of arrows has insane aoe damage but there's also a harmony between the two because rapid fire isn't that bad for aoe either it is not penetrating shot levels of aoe but with its unique aspect that i will go over in a second it does decent and well-rounded aoe rain of arrows with the amulet of hakan does absolutely bonkers aoe damage but single target damage isn't bad either because of the utility it has but also because it shoots off so many arrows that even if there's only one thing on screen like a boss it is still going to get blasted by this ability so what does the amulet of hakan really do it imbues rain of arrows with all three imbuements every single time you cast it the three imbuements in the game are cold shadow and poison so your rain of arrows now can chill enemies which means it's another source of cc and chill can become freezing your opponent as well and with the various modifiers to cc targets in the game that i have for this build we will then also deal more damage but rain of arrows has already seen of itself because it allows you to knock down enemies with this upgrade this is definitely a talent you want to take for this build and thus just in general we get a lot of cc and survivability when combining rain of arrows its upgrade and the amulet then poison applies damage over time and the shadow aspect helps out with aoe and just blows up things even more it's a dominoes effect essentially where all three different imbuements help out each other with completely wiping anything on screen so the amulet is actually very decent it makes rain of arrows go from a pretty meh ability to yes this is the good stuff and before you say ah it's unique ain't nobody got this thing well i got it a bunch of times so far and every other rogue i know as well anecdotal stuff yes i know but i really don't think it's that hard to get just kill monsters till you get it and if you don't get it well you will get it until then you can safely use death trap as a replacement for this build for the rain of arrow slot but when you get the amulet you can put in rain of arrows death trap is also a great option by the way but rain of arrows has a much bigger radius and some additional utility and it just fits this idea of the build a bit better in my opinion now why did i call my machine gun rainbow rogue build my machine gun rainbow rogue build i'm glad you asked the amulet will make all the arrows have different colors and it results into this visually stunning ability of mass destruction and then machine gun thanks to rapid fire add the two together and you get the machine gun rainbow rogue and also we use a crossbow to deal damage and if you remove cross from the word uh, then you get bow and bow is in the name as well yes 9000 iq stuff right there okay i've thought about it now I've talked a bit about Rain of Arrows and I think the footage makes it clear why it's nice. So let's talk a bit about the other main part of the build, Rapid Fire for a second and why it fits so well with Rain of Arrows. Rapid Fire has this great upgrade that gives us energy when we hit vulnerable targets and within this build we will have a bunch of ways to make sure that our enemies are in fact vulnerable. So Rapid Fire becomes a completely self-sustaining ability because it makes sure we never run out of energy while dishing out great damage. That means that for our specialization we then don't need inner sight for energy and accordingly since we can spam rapid fire and have great damage output due to infinite energy essentially we also don't need the benefits from running combo points thus thanks to how rapid fire works and its nature we can then run preparation which accordingly will be the best for rain of arrows as it will make its cooldown go by much faster which is definitely needed since this thing has like a 60 second cooldown without any cooldown reduction with preparation and us having the ability to just spam rapid fire thanks to it being a self-sustaining ability we proc preparation a lot of the time and thus we will have rain of arrows up a lot of the time as well relatively speaking i wouldn't say for every group of mobs but pretty much i would say for every other group of mobs and elites and versus the packs where you don't have rain of arrows well rapid fire does a great job at just clearing 
packs as well so it is no problem either way in conclusion i therefore think that rapid fire and rain of arrows is the best way to make a rain of arrows build work due to all the just mentioned synergies there is a nice harmony to be found here when using these two abilities for our other abilities we then want to run poison and shadow imbuement for rapid fire poison imbuement on rapid fire makes this thing go absolute nuclear and makes bosses melt in seconds and then shadow imbuement to help out with aoe and general clearing for rapid fire for when rain of arrows is on cooldown then shadow step for the mobility and this ability is also going to be our source of unstoppable for when we get cc shadow step has a low cooldown so it really helps out with removing cc on ourselves and as you probably know when getting cc as a squishy rogue things will get a bit dangerous so shadow step is really nice in helping out with that for our final ability i then like to run poison trap i've tried out a bunch of things for this build but poison trap is just too good it gives us cc because it knocks down everything inside of it it also has the countering poison trap upgrade which is pretty much a godsend for any build that uses multiple imbuements if it procs it will instantly reset one third of our abilities cooldowns which is huge since we do make good use of imbuements for this build and it also helps out with applying vulnerability and gives us more crit versus whatever gets caught by this trap it is overall just too good and that's why i decided to run it for this build as well and yes we covered all six abilities and that means you also don't need or even want a basic attack for this build rapid fire is all we need for both a core and basic skill because we never run out of energy with it and it gives us all the damage we want so all in all the general and farming strategy for my machine gun rainbow rogue is pretty straightforward you use rain of arrows for very big packs with elites bunch of mobs you know exactly what i mean you really just want to get as many enemies as possible in one area to nuke everything out of existence with this beautiful ability and as you saw it has a really big radius and reach so you can literally just fill up your entire screen with mobs and it will do the job you also really want to use rain of arrows of cooldown to make the most use out of it when it's on cooldown you use rapid fire with poison and shadow imbuement of cooldown and you prioritize these two abilities depending on what you're firing as i just mentioned rapid fire does really good damage it has in fact one of the highest scaling modifiers in the game you can make a build with just rapid fire as well and you would be perfectly fine in clearing like i said there's a harmony in this build because we spam rapid fire essentially which in turn leads to rain of arrows being off cooldown quite often and also because we use imbuements on our rapid fire but our rain of arrows is also already fully imbued so things stack like that as well this is useful if there are still mobs alive after using rain of arrows and you just want to clean up the rest with rapid fire the build performs well in higher tier nightmare dungeons as you can see in this footage right here essentially damage output wise there is not much to worry about i would say that this build is very balanced in that sense you have a safety net as you can kite and deal damage from a distance as a range stroke that means you are also able to avoid many scenarios where mobs deal damage to you in melee range for example mobs that blow up when you kill them and accordingly deal damage to a small radius surrounding them for those interested in pushing very high tiers in nightmare dungeons with this build you will need to keep an eye out on surviving at all times as you're still quite squishy all things considered as you see damage output wise i'm definitely killing everything quite fast in these clips even though our enemies are much higher level so i would say damage output utility and general clearing speed wise there is not much to worry about while survivability on the other hand is going to be your main point of focus for trying to push very high tiers because you can definitely get one tapped if you do not pay enough attention however for those interested in leveling to level 100 on world tier 4 farming generally clearing content and killing things that are like 10 to 20 levels higher than you you should have a good and fun time so let's get into our setup skill tree and everything starting with our gear and aspects Let's start off with the amulet since we already talked about it. The word of Hakan is one of the most important pieces for this build. It is absolutely mandatory for Reign of Arrows. Now, as you can see, I have pretty bad rolls on it. I have only plus one rank to all imbuement skills, even though you can roll plus three ranks to all imbuement skills with this thing. So if you have better rolls, then that is really nice. But most importantly is obviously that aspect, which will imbue our Reign of Arrows with all imbuements at once. Every single time we cast Reign of Arrows, basically. For those that do not have the amulet yet, or really anything that they want in this game i have heard rumors that if you subscribe to me and give this video a like that in turn that will increase your luck in diablo 4 and pretty much give you any unique any legendary or any aspect that you desire as soon as possible doesn't that sound amazing so make sure to do that and definitely let me know if it actually worked in the comments then for your rings you definitely want to prioritize stats like vulnerable damage critical strike damage and critical strike chance those are the three most important stats that you can roll on your rings for this build and for your fourth stat you want to roll something like 
critical strike damage with imbued skills or imbued skill damage or maximum life that can also roll on rings which is also a really good stat for the aspects on these rings i went with critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by 25 percent for five seconds this is a really nice aspect since we use rapid fire all the time which is a core skill so our attack speed will consistently be buffed and then the other aspect that i run here is the one that increases the imbuement skill effects so they have increased potency against vulnerable enemies and since we will be making our enemies vulnerable all the time this is a nice bonus to our skills that are imbued then for your melee weapons you definitely want to go ahead and get swords instead of daggers reason being is that swords have that critical strike damage innate bonus which is obviously much more useful to us as a ranged rogue unlike daggers that have that close range damage bonus thing yeah it's not that useful for ranged rogue Regarding the stats that you want to roll on your swords are then things like vulnerable damage. Again, this is one of the most important stats in the game. So vulnerable damage, get it on both of your swords essentially. And then things like critical strike damage with imbued skills, critical strike damage just in general, damage to distant enemies, ultimate skill damage is even pretty decent as well. Just everything that is offensive that boosts our damage output. For the aspects, I went with edge masters on one sword. Basically, skills deal an extra percent of damage based on the amount of energy that we have. And then for the other sword, I went with Aerostorm, actually. And the reason why I went with Aerostorm is because we have so many different instances of where we can proc this effect, essentially. Think of Rain of Arrows, where we, like, shoot off 50 arrows at once. And it's two waves. And then Rapid Fire that we just spam all the time. So we're consistently shooting off arrows at our enemies. And every single one of those arrows has a chance to proc this thing. And you can have up to five active Aerostorms. And we will proc it all the time time with this setup so essentially just a nice boost to our damage output then for helmet you definitely want to prioritize getting cooldown reduction on this thing and in generally speaking just utility based stats cooldown reduction in particular is extremely good for this build on this gear piece because yeah rain of arrow 60 second cooldown and that 14.6 percent cooldown reduction that i have on my helm helps out tremendously with rain of arrows aside from cooldown reduction you want to get things like life on kill ranks to poison imbuement just generally speaking, utility based stats. And then the aspect that I went with is the one that makes me take less damage from crowd controlled enemies. And as you know, we have so much crowd control in our kit, whether it's through Rain of Arrows, for example, or Poison Trap, you name it. So we have a pretty consistent source of getting less damage with this aspect. And then when a crowd controlled enemy deals direct damage to us, we also gain movement speed for two seconds. So it is overall just a really nice aspect for this build. Chest, it's really easy. Always prioritize defensive stats here. Don't go for offensive stats. Defensive stats like total armor, damage reduction, and maximum life are going to be really good for your chest. And then for the aspect, I went with Umbros. This is essentially a seventh ability for free because we don't have to use Dark Shroud on our hotbar. With this aspect, we will have a chance to get a free Dark Shroud every time we critically strike our enemies with our Marksman skills. So that means our Reign of Arrows, which is a Marksman skill, our Rapid Fire, which is a Marksman skill. So there are a lot of ways to proc it and get those free Dark Shrouds. And if you don't know what Dark Shroud is, it's a Shroud that surrounds your body and gives you damage reduction, essentially. And you can have up to five of them at once. So if you get five of them, which is, again, relatively easy to get with this build, you get a bunch of extra damage reduction. For your gloves, you want to prioritize stats like Critical Strike Chance, Attack Speed, but most importantly, four ranks to Rapid Fire. This is one of the most important stats that you can roll on any gear piece for this build. Four ranks to Rapid Fire is going to be huge, so make sure to get that. And then for the aspect, I went with Blast Trapper. Blast Trapper is absolutely amazing for this build, because it gives us an additional way to apply vulnerability on our enemies in this case through poison trap and we already have various ways to apply vulnerability through say things like exploit our glyphs but exploit only makes vulnerability apply on our enemies for three seconds which can be a bit on the short side for boss fights for example so this aspect then really helps out with that as it gives us another source of applying vulnerability pretty consistently so it's a really good aspect for this build for your pants you again just like with the chest want to prioritize defensive stats over offensive stats so get Get things like damage reduction, total armor, maximum life, and ranks to Dark Shroud is really good as well. For the aspect, I went with Disobedience here. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of Disobedience because it gives you a ton of damage reduction and it's great for survivability. And with things like Rain of Arrows in our kit hitting a million things pretty much instantly, we can get 100 stacks really quickly, so that is nice as well. Then for the boots, I have finally gotten Penitent Greaves. If you have it as well, definitely use it because its chill effect will synergize well with the chill effect from Rain of Arrows as modified by the word of Hakuna. 
Khan. And Penitent Greaves gives us another way to apply chill and facilitates a means for us to increase our damage output even more because it amplifies our damage against chilled targets. For our bow we want to use a crossbow because of the innate bonus to vulnerable damage which is better than the innate bonus that bows have which in that case is extra damage to distant enemies. Vulnerable damage is just much better. Make sure your DPS is high as possible because it will be one of the most important stats for your crossbow and regarding the stats that can roll on it you want to definitely prioritize things like vulnerable damage, critical strike damage, critical strike damage to imbued skills, core skill damage but also dexterity is really good. I've put the unique aspect for rapid fire here to benefit from that two hander 100% extra bonus. The aspect is called repeating aspect and with the bonus we can get up to 90% chance to make our arrows ricochet. This aspect is also mandatory for this build I would say it makes rapid fire go from a single target ability to a single target ability with a much needed AoE component and it just helps out so much with clearing when rain of arrows is off cooldown. It is not an aspect from a codex of power however so you actually need to have some good RNG and get it from random loot in the world extract it and then put it on your weapon. I've gotten the aspect a few times so far. For example, I have another one right here. But outside of that statement, there's no actual data at this point in time that I can use to tell you how easy or hard it is to get this aspect. So if you don't have it yet, then really all you can do is make sure to keep your eye on it when killing enemies. And with that, we now have discussed all my gear. For sockets, I went with topazes for that extra damage reduction when we're crowd controlled and then emeralds for extra critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies and skulls on our jewelry for extra armor okay next up the skill tree now i already said we don't have a basic attack for this build so we only put two points in the basic attack so we can actually move towards the core skill tree here we go all out on rapid fire obviously we get its upgrade and we get improved rapid fire like i already said in the video improved rapid fire is extremely important it makes rapid fire a completely self-sustaining ability without us having to worry about energy pretty much and yeah it is really good then you want to get one point in sturdy for that close damage reduction but more importantly this will function as a path to get three points in siphoning strikes and siphoning strikes is really good actually with rapid fire because yeah we just keep shooting off arrows if you saw some of the clips that i showed you in this video you would also see that my hp would slowly just keep getting these ticks of hp and that was thanks to this ability it's really really good for our survivability so we take three points in siphoning strikes then we move down towards the agility uh three thingy get shadow step this is our mobility our source of unstoppable like i explained get enhanced shadow step and then get methodical shadow step methodical shadow step will give us an extra form of cc by stunning our targets which is nice three points in weapon mastery which will increase our critical strike damage for our crossbow one point in concussive since we have multiple sources of knocking back or knocking down our enemies especially knocking down with rain of arrows poison trap so we have a source of extra increased critical strike chance through this talent which is nice and then we move to the next three get poison trap get the improvement and then get the countering poison trap that i already talked about extremely important for that cooldown resets then we put points in dark shroud we get the dark shroud we get the enhanced dark shroud and we get the subverting dark shroud and even though we don't use dark shroud on our hot bar the dark shrouds that we generate through our aspect umbros will still get these buffs so yeah it's going to make our dark shrouds just better and that's why I put three points in these. Then we go to the imbuements. We get poison trap, fully spec into it and get blended poison imbuement. This talent will make our critical strikes just pretty much melt bosses. It's very good. Then we also have shadow imbuement. Obviously, I only put one point in the base skill because yeah, you don't really need that extra base damage. As you will see, you will just blow up everything anyway. So yeah, it is just, in my opinion, a ways to put five points into this. Then I move towards enhanced shadow imbuement and get blended shadow imbuement. Blended shadow imbuement is really good because it's another source of making our enemy is vulnerable then i put three points in precision imbuement imbued skills gain nine percent increased critical strike chance it's as simple as that just more crits is always good then frigid finesse three points in frigid finesse and this is a very good talent for this build for two reasons essentially rain of arrows which chills our enemies but also our boots which also chill our enemies so we have multiple ways of benefiting from this talent with this build and read that description you deal 15 percent increased damage to chilled enemies and this bonus increases to 30 percent against frozen enemies and the little x that you see behind the percentages indicate that it's a multiplicative bonus so this talent is really really good in increasing our damage output significantly now before we move onwards towards the ultimate skills i forgot to mention these two talents exploit and malice you definitely want to get three points in both of them they will just significantly increase
increase our damage output and they are a staple in many rogue builds so get exploit and get malice then we move up towards the ultimate tree we get three points in trap mastery with poison trap we will increase our critical strike chance against vulnerable and crowd controlled enemies for four seconds one point in adrenaline rush to get three points in haste haste is good because it applies to conditions basically if you have 50 percent or more energy you get increased movement speed and if you have 50 percent or less energy you gain increased attack speed so either way we get a nice bonus then rain of arrows fully spec into rain of arrows get the prime rain of arrows and then also the supreme rain of arrows which will add that cc component to rain of arrows for our key passive then finally we're going to go with precision precision is really good with rapid fire and rain of arrows because they are both marksman skills and they build up stacks quickly for this key passive and essentially what precision does it increases our critical strike damage but then when you're fully stacked which again shouldn't be that hard to achieve with rain of arrows and rapid fire you will have a guaranteed critical strike that also deals increased critical strike damage so all around the board is a really good talent to have for this build okay so for our paragon boards we're going to start off with the starting board obviously who would have thought right but yeah combat is going to be the glyph i went for for the starting board just overall a really good glyph extra critical strike damage with our core skills and then i also took rare nodes such as prime and skillful and then other nodes of importance are some of these magic nodes that also increase our damage output and our maximum life then i moved onwards to the next board which is the no witnesses board i went for the legendary note here as well because we do use an ultimate skill pretty frequently and we run preparation so no witnesses makes a lot of sense to me and then i went for exploit which is in my opinion the best cliff for rogue in the game extra vulnerable damage but also that passive which allows us to apply vulnerability on our enemies every time we damage them and this helps out a lot obviously not just in terms of damage output but also with making rapid fire a self-sustaining ability because yeah we just keep getting energy every time we attack vulnerable targets. Some other notes of importance here are knowledge, extra damage, rune, extra damage to healthy enemies, as well as extra critical strike damage. And the surrounding magic notes also have those type of effects. So also nice notes to get. Then we move onwards to the next board, which is the exploit weakness board. Exploit weakness is really good versus things like bosses. Combining it with rapid fire will just melt bosses. It will just keep increasing our damage and it stacks very quickly with how fast rapid fire comes out. And then we get another really good glyph for this build right here. Ranger increases our marksman skill damage. So both drain of arrows, rapid fire, but also gives us 10% reduced damage when wielding a ranged weapon, which is obviously very nice because we are a ranged rogue. So both ways it's a very good glyph, gives us survivability and extra damage output then you want to path to the next board through the bottom of this board reason being is because i went for the exploit weakness legendary node so when you path you have to go left and right here and then yeah i think going bottom is then better because you get things like damage to elites and you get this rare note as well hunter killer which gives us a nice 32 percent extra damage bonus to elites the next board is going to be the eldritch bounty board this note makes a lot of sense to me it gives us a nice multiplicative bonus to our imbued skills and that does ramp up for sure then for our glyph i went with infused extra imbued skill damage and if you meet the bonus for which for some reason i haven't currently i think i need one more note in intelligence like this one i would get this intelligence note to meet the requirement but what it does is give you increased imbued skill damage and it helps out with maintaining our cooldowns because every time we cast one of our imbuements so either the poison or the shadow imbuement it lowers the cooldown of the other imbuement then we move onwards to the next board and finally i'm going to go with diminish this is a really good defensive type of glyph you take 10 percent reduced physical damage from vulnerable enemies as you know we have vulnerability pretty much applied all the time on our enemies so realistically speaking we have the damage reduction from this glyph pretty much always applied so i'm almost level 100 with this build and damage output wise there's really nothing to worry about you just destroy everything and that's also mainly the reason why i went for this glyph so we can also push those higher tier nightmare dungeons but if you don't care about that stuff then you can also just take a more offensive glyph if you want to go for something more offensive, however, you can also go for ambush in this in this board and get that increased damage to enemies affected by trap skills. As you know, we use poison trap, so it can proc pretty often. And then control is also a good alternative because it increases our damage to slowed or chilled enemies. And we have multiple ways to chill our enemies. Now, I don't have all the paragon points unlocked because I haven't done the renowned yet. But I do think that this is a good overall board that gives us damage, gives us survivability and gives us utility. It's overall just a nice way to spend your points. And that was everything you need to know for my machine gun rainbow rogue build. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Subscribe and like the video if you did and let me know how it goes for you when you're playing with this build. And in general, let me know your thoughts in the comments.